I, I first want to bring up that it is Suits and Sneakers Week, uh, Coaches versus Cancer. I think it's a it's a great organization. It's one time our coaches really come together. NABC Coaches Association and all the coaches and uh, since Norm Stewart, Coach Bayheim, uh, whatever it is, 27 years ago, uh, raised you know, millions and millions of dollars that have made a difference in a lot of people's lives for research, for awareness, and, and for advocacy. Uh, and, and I just uh, want to bring it up. I, you know, normally it's suits and sneakers, but obviously I know Buzz wore a suit today, at least half the game. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the mass was one way we could get it out there. So I wanted to make sure I, I brought that up uh, because it is important and, and, I know we're in the middle of a COVID uh, pandemic and we've lost a lot of lives there, but cancer doesn't stop. And we got to make sure that, uh, you know, that we are paying attention, that we're aware that uh, I know I've talked to several doctors, radiologists, and they're really afraid that uh, because of the pandemic, there's going to, we're going to lose the death rate from cancer is going to jump where it had been going down because people did not get to the hospital or were afraid to go to the hospital. And, so uh, hopefully this just brings a little awareness. Uh, I'm proud of our guys. Uh, obviously, we came to win the game. Uh, we battled. Uh, we gave ourselves a chance. The beginning was not pretty. I thought we finally got things settled down. We made some shots. Obviously, Nigel was, was special uh, to go eight for 14 from three. Um, and, and, you know, he, he kept coming up with big plays for us to keep us in the game and give us a chance. I thought Davion was very good, um, you know, and, 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 and then I thought Mike McGurl, you know, did what he does, needs to do. And, you know, six, ten, ten points, six assists, and, and did some good things. It would have been nice if we get a few other guys to make a few shots that would have helped. Um, but we didn't do that, but we did execute till the down the stretch. And, and obviously that we haven't been in this a close game in a while. And, um, we lost the ball a couple times. We didn't execute when it mattered. And then they, they, they did. Their, I thought their older guys were, every time we pushed it or gave ourselves a chance, I thought Flag, who's a senior that we played against, Chandler actually was a starter, has been a starter for a while, stepped up. Um, and then Miller's a, a good, really good, solid player. Uh, those guys were, were, were good for them. So uh, days one, I I know he's getting x-rays right now. He wanted to watch the game. Um, just hope and pray it's, it, it's not a fracture, but uh, um, we'll see what happens with him. But our other guy stepped in. I thought Antonio was really good, gave us a nice boost uh, off the bench, uh, gave us some consistency, which we need out of him. Um, you, know, it, it, uh, you know, there's just not much you can say. I just uh, – I asked him to come with the right attitude. I thought they were – pretty focused um you know despite what we've gone through i i thought defense was going to be important i told them not 25 at halftime we held them to 24 our defense did break down a little bit in the second half um we talked about playing harder than them we wanted to play hard chart for the first time in in four games five games which gave us a chance and then we we said share the basketball and help your teammates get open shots and I thought we did that. You got 15 assists, um, only 11 turnovers, which gives you a chance. Still, even some of those probably, you know, we could cut back a few more of those. It might, it might help us. But uh, sad, sad for our guys. Um, and, you know, that's all. I, I don't know what else to say. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we'll go to questions. The first question to Tim Fitzgerald. First coach, thanks for the uh, comments about cancer. Um, you seem to move the ball better today. Was it moving the ball better today that led to some better looks at three, or did it all kind of go hand in hand once the three started going for Nigel, they, they yeah, moved the ball better? Well, one, we, we executed, and I, I, we're not very good at, and in that in-between, uh, that, that transition where – um, it's five on four, or four on three. We don't make very good decisions. We try to force things. I, I tried to call a lot of uh, plays and sets to kind of get them in, get it either to get look inside or, or get Nigel coming off some screens and then play off of that. Um, 
I thought even the ones we missed, uh, you know, there were several of them that were pretty open. And, and I think the ball movement was important. I didn't realize we took 35 threes, to be honest, um, you know, until after the game. I, it's, it's too many. We got to be a little more patient. I know some of them are late in shot clocks, but uh, we got we got to get to the free throw line. And I, uh, you know, I, I, I thought we, you know, we did go inside sometimes, but we probably didn't enough. But they, 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 their defense forced us to keep moving the basketball. We played off of that and, and looked more like a team, to be honest. And that, that you, you feel like you had some, that they, they were coached a little bit. But we need some other guys to make shots. If, if, you know, Nigel's two for, or eight for 14, the rest of the guys from three are two for 21. And uh, and I think Mike has two of those. So the rest of the guys are 0 for 14. And and you know you got to have somebody else step up and make one of those or a couple of those. It might have changed the game. And, and what changed about the pressure that seemed to really get you in the last couple of minutes? I don't think you know if you go back and look at it. We just we lost the ball a couple times. Uh, probably you know the haven't been in the situation. Uh, their pressure was there the whole game. And some of it is just to disrupt you and not let you get in there in our sets. I thought we did a pretty good job sometimes attacking it and other times getting into our stuff. Um, we really, our goal was to keep them in the 50s. You know, that obviously to get the 68, if we get keep them in the 50s and we get 61, we win. So a few breakdowns there. Uh, they points off turnovers. We have 11, they have nine. So uh, fast break points, two to two, so pretty controlled game. Uh, both of us scoring in the paint, second chance. We probably, you know, we had a lot more uh, of those. So, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, again, just uh, being in there. Luke has a wide open three. I don't know if he should take it or not. Uh, he, he takes it. You know, if it goes in, it, it's it's a great shot. It doesn't go in now go down and then they get another bucket so they they make the plays and we don't and one final thing for me with everything that happened in the second half we kind of forget about how important Antonio Gordon was in that first half and did he kind of keep you in it when it, at a point where it could have gotten away there's no doubt I, I I thought you know we gave a couple other guys uh, the looks off the bench early and then we gave Tone the look and you know I thought he showed great maturity um, and gave us some consistency, and and he did a really nice job. It, it, just a good line, you know, eight eight points, five rebounds, four offensive rebounds. You know, just uh, you know, again, if he makes one of those threes, it, it helps. But I I thought he was very very important for us. The foul trouble obviously hurt. Thanks, coach. Okay, uh, next question to John Kurtz. Yeah, Bruce, what, what's he made the biggest difference in just seeming to get more energy and, and efforts uh, today than, than earlier this week out of your team? I, don't, I think we just went up against uh, – I, I, Tom Izzo called me, and I, I don't know if I told you guys, he said God would couldn't have beat Baylor the other night. We went up against a team that's really, really good. They got on a roll. They made all the threes. Um, they broke our spirit. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But I think we came into it with a pretty good mindset. Um, we just didn't. They're just really, really good, and and we're not at that level right now. And then when they make shots like that, it's really tough. So um, I, I think you know we just kept we keep talking to our guys about you know we're I, I tell them I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep coaching them. I'm going to keep trying to inspire them. I'm going to try to keep them playing hopefully the right way. Um, I thought we played the right way today. We just didn't find a way to win the game. And how much of a difference for Nigel do you think it made just the fact that he was able to have a game earlier this week to get his legs back under him? Is that why we saw so much better performance out of him? And he was, he's dead. He, a couple times, one time he sat at the end and I, after he, I think he lost the ball and then stole the ball back. And, and I, I, I thought something was wrong. And he just said, coach, I need a breath. And uh, we, we had already used our last time out. So, um, you know, it just, you got to give him a lot of credit. He, he was special today. Um, you know, this is with three practices and one game, and then he can step up. And that's, you know, when people said, uh, what happened to you over those few weeks? Uh, I, I told you guys that, you know, I think it's, it's pretty obvious. 
you know, Nigel gives a lot, lot of good things to us. We just need some other guys to step up and not have to put so much pressure on him. Appreciate it, Bruce. Thanks. Okay. Next question to Kellis Robinette. I know it's maybe some out of necessity with Dijuan going down, but uh, uh, Lou plays 18 minutes, no points. Um, that's kind of been his line going, you know, for a while now. What, what do you, what do you kind of stress with him that you want him to do during, during games? What can you bring this? this I think just be solid. It would obviously he came in as a shooter. It's nice if he makes one of those open threes. Uh, but again, I, you know, this is somebody did not play, did not even practice with us for the first, you know, five months here on campus. So you, you stuck him in a game last week or two weeks ago with four practices. Actually, we, we left it up to him because our, our trainer really didn't want him. He thought he shouldn't be in the game, but I thought it, what does it hurt? Allow him to have some chance to get some minutes. Uh, you know, it's, it's all new to him. He, he's a freshman. And, you know, it, if he can make some shots and be solid in other ways, it, it definitely would help. And when, uh, when the score was tied 60-60, I think Nigel calls the timeout. You have the inbounds play. Yep. Um, what, what, what did A&M do there to, to get in the way of that? Well, that they switched over? it. And we said they're going to switch it. Now get the ball to Davion. We just want to get it in and then run a play. And then on the handoff, they overplayed it, and it was a it was a little bad handoff flip. Mike lost the ball. They got the ball, went down. Mike fouled on the dunk, um, and that was, uh, you know, it, obviously it didn't go well. So, and that that's where Davion's got to learn. He gets a little guy on him, learn how to seal and post. It's happened a few times now. Um, you know, I, I, I it's something again. Uh, we talk about, but there's only so much time to work on things during the day and keep their attention. And uh, you, you hope they have, I guess they got to go through some of this to figure it out. And, and we, we just got to keep helping them. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, next question to Michael Goins. Yeah, Bruce, is uh, Seldon Miguel kind of getting too sped up on too many occasions and just kind of needs to – Yeah, he wants to do something all the time. And, and obviously, again, we cut it down to 11 turnovers and he has four. And he's just got to find a, a, a niche. It's, it's, it's different. Um, uh, uh, college basketball is way different. It's not free-flowing and open and just kind of go when you want. And uh, – you know, he, it, it, it's, he's frustrated. He's disappointed. Um, you know, and, and, he, and last year, he was, I think he's, a, if you look it up, he might have been a 42% three-point shooter. And, and it was one thing I thought at least, uh, you know, I thought that's what he would give us a little bit. And, and he, he has not shot it well. Um, and I know he cares. He, he, you know, you talk about this is his dad has cancer and he hasn't seen him in two years. So you think about a young man that's, you know, in a whole nother country, uh, has not seen his family in, in over two years and, and dad's battling cancer. So it, it's not easy on him. And, and he wants to do well. He cares. He, some, and we can, we can get after him. He's one guy we can get after and he deals with it. Okay. I just, I just hope he can figure out his niche here. He's getting a lot of experience and figure out a little niche here as we move forward. And you mentioned not being in this position in a while. Does it take closing out one of these to kind of reestablish a winning mentality? It, hopefully. I was hoping it would go our way. Sometimes you need balls to bounce your way, things to happen. Um, you know, we just haven't had many things go our way this year. Um, you know, and again, all you, you just, whether you read Bible verses or you, you talk to the guys and help them and, you know, adversity, dealing with it, if it doesn't kill you, you know, all it can do is make you better and stronger. And, um, you know, it, it, again, you know, today another thing happens with Dejuan. And, you know, I, I don't know what to say. It's just all we can do. I, I, again, I'm proud of our guys. They kept battling, fighting, hoping that we found a way to win for their sake because they, they deserve to win it. Now we go to Kansas. we got to come with the same mentality. Hopefully we'll do that. And it, it's good. we know it's going to be a tough game. Thank you, Bruce. Next question to Cody Friesen. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, I'm looking at the play chart, play hard chart. Uh, Deshaun's the highest scoring guy by a pretty significant margin. 
Uh, how big was it uh, losing him today and then potentially down this gauntlet of uh, Big 12 play? Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, he's, if you look at the play hard numbers, I don't know if they released them or not, but it's on our board in our locker room and, and he's like ahead by 40. And, um, and then, you know, no one's even close to him. So it, it's, it's, it's something that I, I wish he would take more pride in because you don't get publicity for it, but it makes a difference in the game. So, and I keep telling our guy, other guys, you know, you want to contribute to the game. This, are, these are things you can do, you know, taking a charge. He also leads us in taking charges, uh, uh, you know, the loose balls, uh, you know, deflections, offensive rebounds, uh, all those things can be a difference maker in the game. But uh, hopefully some of the other guys will take pride. It, it does, it does uh, make a difference not to have days one, his energy, his life. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we found a way to stay close, to be in it. We had a six-point lead second half. Just, uh, you know, we, I thought it would be a grind-out game. I thought we'd find a way to win at the end. But, uh, obviously, I was, I, I was wrong. Uh, next question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Coach. You, um, it might have been a reason that you've already brought up, but uh, Selton needing to find a niche, um, is that part of the reason why Casey Iziagu has been starting with uh, Bradford there? I just They've come, you know, we Casey, Davion, you know, just we thought maybe give us a different look, take advantage of it. Uh, I thought we went to Casey early. He didn't finish. Uh, you know, again, he didn't play for seven, seven weeks. He hasn't practiced, you know, a handful of times, it, you know, and I told him, you, this is, you know, this is not easy. You got it. You're playing against good players and you got to get your rhythm back. And, um, but it, it, you know, he's, we're just trying to, I guess, ease a little pressure on Selton and some of the other guys, Antonio, maybe those other guys step up and, and then maybe make them accountable too. Hey, you, we're going to play other guys. If you don't, don't get things done, we're going to play the other guys. And it was, you know, to, I guess for A&M's credit, they went small several times and really just played two, three, four guys and tried to take advantage, and they did in that one little stretch, which which probably made a difference in the game. And then without your leader, like, like a Dejuan, I mean, possibly out um, for the next game, how do you get these young guys ready for, you know, such a rivalry like Kansas heading to Lawrence? I think it's just – I just told them. I'm proud of them. Come with the same attitude. Come with the same – determination on the defensive end play hard and if we execute and then somebody else steps up and makes some shots um, you know who knows a lot of things can happen I, it, I think the score was 19 to 18 TCU Kansas at halftime the other day so uh, a lot of a lot of craziness happens and and you know who knows we'll see what we'll see how we do thank you coach yep okay we'll do one last question to Ryan Block Hey, uh, Bruce, I know like you mentioned that, that Dejuan is getting is getting x-rayed, but like at least do you know what kind of injury it is? I mean, some kind of leg or knee or? Um, uh, Casey landed on him uh, when he, I think he went to block the shot or I can't remember, or he went in for the layup and then Casey was trying to follow up. And he, I think from what I asked Dejuan at halftime, um, he landed on him. Uh, that's what he thought happened, at least. I, I don't know. You know, we I haven't watched the video. Um, and then, you know, Casey's a pretty good, uh, you know, strong, heavy guy that we land on a foot. Who knows what happens? But, um, you know, just hope it's just a, a sprain. But we'll see. I'll probably know here shortly. I, I know they just they just went across the street, so. Well, and, and just I guess as, as follow up, I know, like you said, you'll have more clarity after that. But I guess are you kind of already in your mind assuming he's not going to be ready for, for Tuesday? I would, I would doubt it. You know, mm -hmm. just it, he couldn't even walk on it. They put him in the boot. And, uh, but he also, the last time, this is the other foot that he hurt in the last time. So this was his good foot. Um, and But the last time him and Luke worked six, eight hours a day, and he got back in a week. So – um, you know, so we just hope for his sake um, that maybe something good happened and, and, it's, and it's not a fracture.